I can cut this over the back, can't I? Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you can see in the uh, in the bench in the vice we've got um, we've got our spoon ready to go, and I'm just going to check that the volume is all working fine. Hello. Yeah, that's working fine. So, yeah, uh, thank you for joining us, and something different again for you all to see. Thomas Woodcarver, he's just in the back. He's just come come in actually. Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon, man. Thomas Woodcarver. Can show that one. Yeah, he's he's, he's in the old. back. That's so you can see he's going to go in the back now, and he's this is a spoon then that we're working on. A uh, nice piece of juniper. So Dad is going to take that in the back there, and he's going to get this ready. So you'll be seeing this later in the uh, the the demonstration, the live stream today. Uh, happy Easter to everyone. Yeah. Easter Monday. Yeah. So hope everyone's had a. A nice Easter, and what what I'm going to do? I'm just going to demonstrate how we carve out this one here. Oh, someone's joined us. Oh, it's Tommy work, Tommy's workshop. Hello, Tommy. Glad you can join us. Happy Easter. This is actually following on uh, when we asked all of yourselves for a, a couple of weeks back. Clocks, the carver. Let's get to it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, thank you for joining us as well. This one, we were asking you all a couple of weeks ago for clock suppliers. So we did manage to get a clock supplier. You can just see, uh, you can just hear Dad in the background firing up the, uh, firing up the the scroll saw to cut that spoon out. We were asking you all about um, suppliers, any ideas, and following on from that, then we did manage to get hold of some clock movements, which is great because. If you go back 20 years ago, see a few more have joined us. Hello, Aubrey. Oh, and Yelly's here as well. Hello, Aubrey. We still haven't tried your recipe yet. It's still on the list of things to do is to try that recipe. Because, of course, you gave us a really nice recipe for Welsh cakes. It's on our to-do list. We will be trying that one. Um, yet we've managed to get some clock movements. So that was the idea then today was to share with you all uh, a design of Love Spoon, a bit of a unique, another unique design, and it incorporates a clock. So this is our Celtic clock. We just put it up on our website, and I'm going to demonstrate how to carve it. The wood we're using, this is a piece of teak, recycled wood. First thing to point out then, it's a little bit thicker than our normal Love Spoons. That's sort of the typical thickness of a Love Spoon. You can see we've got ones like that one there and that one there. Those are the sort of typical thicknesses that we would be using. This one's a bit thicker and it's to accommodate the, the clock movement. So we're starting off, we've got this Celtic weave design all around the outside. Um, and that is basically what we, we're going to carve into the design. As always, we've marked out with that vertical grain. And the thing that I'm just trying to make up my mind on here we are, decision made. We're going to go that way with the twist. And yeah, we're going to go that way as well. So everything else will be mashed up to that twist. Because the idea with the Celtic twist, we create that effect of going over and under. The Wood Burning Warrior, good morning. Walk, walk in the dogs. Brilliant, thank you for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Great to have you here with us on uh, Easter Monday. And so, yeah, we, we're just going to build up this weave around the outside, this Celtic style weave. And as you'll know from uh, most of you have, have joined us before, we use a lot of Celtic design. Teak is actually Dad's favourite wood to work in then. So this is quite sort of a, a typical design from, from our workshop now. For those of you interested in specifically the Love Spoon tradition, Celtic designs then are more of a modern feature. So a lot of people think that because the the links between the, the Celts and Wales, that it would be um, quite a traditional thing with the Love Spoon tradition, but it's not. Because of course the Love Spoon it is linked with sailors and seaports. And so they would have used symbols and ideas from all around the world 
but the um, the Celtic symbols are more of a modern introduction in the tradition itself. Just look at it on the screen here. Oh, excuse the noise, it looks a little bit dark. I don't know, maybe it's okay for yourselves. What I'm gonna do, here we are. I'm just gonna bring that lamp in. That's our posh lamp that we got sent by Ben Q. Hopefully, yeah, it just looked a bit dark to me on the, on the screen. Tell me if it is. Um, and that's, so yeah, hopefully that will improve it a little bit. You'll be able to see it a bit more clearly. So, as you can see, we're doing all of our stop cuts around the outside. Uh, is teeth very expensive and isn't it very hard work? Right, now this is an interesting thing with teak. Uh, it's Dad's favourite to work in. In terms of cost, it cost us very little because it's recycled from some old furniture. Before Covid, we used to go to the furniture sale uh, locally and you could pick up things like teak, uh, furniture, mahogany furniture, oak furniture. We'd be picking that up for next to nothing because the fashion here at the moment is more towards lighter coloured wood. And so a lot of these, you know, even things like walnut, people don't want it. So I got a nice piece of walnut by the side. In terms of its physical properties, uh, we would sort of say that it is it's quite misleading because teak is full of teak oil. So after I've finished doing these stop cuts, you'll see it is actually an easy, excuse me, it's one of the easier timbers for us to carve. They do say, this is going back, things that I've, 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 I've read and seen, they used to get paid a halfpenny extra for, for working in teak because of the extra sharpening. So you do get a little bit of grit in it and so you can end up having to do a little bit of extra sharpening of your, your tools so it can take the edge off a little bit more quickly. But um, when it actually comes to working in it, it's a lovely, lovely timber to work in. And as I say, dad's, dad's favorite wood to work. I think it goes in the category, like with oak, where reputations can be misleading. I'll ask dad, he hasn't heard any of this. So what's your favorite timber to work in? Favorite timber? Favorite timber for you? Well, obviously, I mean, my favorite of all is Burmese teak. There we go. So it's, it's dad's favorite to work in. It's what he learned to carve and it is a, a lovely timber. So I think what we're saying, don't be misled by the reputation. I would recommend anybody to try carving teak because it really is, it's a, it's a nice timber um, to work. Myself, of course, see, I, I look with beech and I found with, the, with certain timbers. You see, there's a lot of... There's a lot of things that... Substitutes, you know, yeah. I mean, they, they used to sell yeah. Iroko. Yeah, Iroko can be... Tea, yeah. Caught, you know, yeah. It isn't, it's not That's, the same. There's no, there's no comparison. You can get, I mean, depending on... I mean, where, where Dad mentions the Iroko, it depends a lot with that. If it's been cut radially or tangentially, if it's been cut tangentially, it can carve quite nicely, yeah, isn't it? That's right. But if it's been cut radially, it can have a tendency to be quite splintery. Plus, with, with the Burmese teak, bear, bear in mind where we live. Yeah. Pembroke Dock. It was a royal dock. They brought a lot of teak into the dock. So you find... A lot of the houses in Pembroke Dock, uh, you know, front doors, solid teak. Um, lots of teak was used. You know, they probably it was available as it came into the dock. And, and so they and they would they would have it. We recycle yeah. all the teak that we get. And so I think what we're sort of saying on that front is it's yeah it's a great timber and well worth. Well worth having a go at carving. And may not suit may not suit everyone. Not, but because it's oily, yeah. it allows the chisels then to they just, got them sharp, they, they, they just glide. Yeah. They glide well, through you it. You see you're carving that one there, and you can see it's it's sound. It's not well, it, and the interesting thing as well, as you notice, I know I don't use it a lot, but I haven't used a mallet on this once. No. So I mean oak is much more difficult, I think, to use. Because yeah. you, you follow the green lines in oak. Yes. Um, it's, it's interesting because I think what's happened a lot as well when it comes to wood, there's a lot of convention with it, isn't it? Where yeah. basswood has been the go-to I mean, wood. I tell you, a, a timber that was very popular was uh, walnut. 
Yeah. Uh, for, for carving. Yeah. Um, but and it's 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 fine for carving, but very quite difficult for finishing sometimes. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, basically teak. I think you get the best of all worlds for. And and it, I think interestingly, um, there'll be people listening to this and think, you know, I've worked with teak, and I, I, they weren't so keen on it. So I think it is a personal thing, yeah. but. Um, I've always said, if we were only working in uh, teak, we would produce a lot more. So you can see our, our gouges, they just glide through it. Um, it is, it's dad's favorite. Oh, I just noticed I'm a bit too far. Sorry about that. I'm just a bit too far back in the vice. Can't I was concentrating on the, on the, on the subject of teak. Yeah, um, it, it is a lovely timber to work in and you, you, as I said you get the best of all worlds because there's a lot of character in the wood itself character in the grain and um, you get a lot of um, it'll finish nicely so when it comes to the sanding certain woods are, are, are more difficult yeah just a lovely lovely timber to work in so as you can see we've done all of those stop cuts in the woods so we've cut down into the wood, done the different stop cuts, and now we're just building up this twist. So the idea, demonstrated the twist on other designs, is to create that effect where it goes under and over. So we're just building that up, getting that twist all around. So it's a Celtic twist surround. And this one then, it came from an idea I've done a, I've got a few videos that I've been working on. We're gonna, we've got a few upcoming videos that are Celtic themed. So one, we're gonna be making a few different Celtic items, including uh, boxes, and there's gonna be a Celtic clock on that video. And then we're doing another one where we're doing some Celtic jewelry, that sort of thing. And so this came from that idea, um, in, in, in terms of, we thought, right, that idea of the original clock that I made, I thought we could adapt that into a love spoon. And um, I thought it would be a nice design for a love spoon. Just notice we've got another comment there for the wood burning warrior. I found out recently why I might be so interested in this love spoon situation. My great, great, great grandfather was Welsh. Last name was B Bodley or Bodley. They were all wood carvers, even my dad. So it's hereditary. There we are. It's in the it's in the blood. Oh, it's a lovely tradition, though. And if you if you know uh, if you if you've got background in it, and you've got Welsh heritage, it's it's a fantastic tradition. And it's something. I mean, the love spoon. We would say it because that's what we do as a day job. But it doesn't get doesn't get the sort of exposure, and um, it's not. It's not really used here in Wales for the fantastic tradition that it is. It really is um, a unique tradition. Um, they've got similar customs around the world, but it's only here in Wales that we actually claim the love spoon tradition as our own. And we have the oldest love spoon here in Wales, dated 1667. And it, it is, it's, it's great fun. As I'm carving, you may have noticed that I've just caught in a couple of places, I've just caught the edge of this surround here. Not worried about that for two reasons. Firstly, I will go back over it and I will level the edges after. The other reason then, it's going to be hidden. When I put the clock movement in there, it'll actually be hidden by the clock itself. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a big problem for us. So we just turn it round in the vise. So we, as we always do, we carve in the one direction. We then turn it round in the vise and carve everything back the other way. We are as well, for those of you who are waiting on it, it will arrive at some point on the channel. We haven't had a chance to uh, film it yet and that's the doll's house. We've got the design there. What we're trying to do is to get all the designs together because as some of you may have noticed, we've, been, we've dedicated a page now on our website. Um, 
to the different things that we make. We've got the designs up on the website so you can print them off and have a go at making the different things yourself. So we're in the process of trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, it's basically we're trying to remember how we made the doll's house. It's through this, this COVID situation we've, um, we've been revisiting our, our past as um, the, uh, not as the Love Spoon workshop. We used to be in wood craft carving. So the house here is still called in wood. And as we've explained a few times, we used to make so many different things. And one of the items that we used to make was the doll's house. So we've been trying to figure out things before we uh, actually film it. One of the first things we had to figure out was the scale because we used a specific scale and we couldn't remember what it was. I think we've decided on one to one to 16, I think is what dad has, has decided on. Um, so yeah, we will demonstrate that and explain a, a little bit about the scale. And I think the one that we're gonna demonstrate is the, um, the Welsh, the, the, is like a little Welsh cottage design. So it is, it is in the, uh, in the offing, but it's just taking us a little bit longer than we would hope. But as soon as it's, as soon as that video is ready, it'll be up on the channel. Now then, we just turned it round again, just to do a little bit more detail. Same again, we got this Celtic twist. The, as I said, the Celtic designs are a modern inclusion in, in the Love Spoon, but I, I like them for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they are beautiful symbols. Secondly, we're a Celtic nation, so we're, we're descended from the, the Celts. And then the third thing is that the symbols had meanings and stories behind them. And that then really does add a different dimension to the work that you're doing. Just a little bit of extra work there, you'll have noticed that I was going over, just to cut that bit out, it, it was just, it's because I'm going across the grain a little bit. It's a bit unavoidable though, in that place. So we keep working our way around the twist. So just using the stop cut and cutting deeper into the woods. And this is what we will do with this. So you'll find this love spoon now. We've made a few of these already. You'll find it on our website and the, the design has and the inclusion of a clock we've put a message a story and a theme oh i've missed a few comments there into into the spoon itself uh, why not the wood in well let, i can tell there's a story behind that one I, i'll come back to that one i'll come back to that one already um the we got teak wood is readily available in virginia walnut on the other hand falls across my driveway wow um and I have to cut, yeah, isn't readily available, so yeah, I have to find some, I have a few pieces of walnut, but no teak. Yeah, it's worth, it's worth having a go with the teak, because, as I say, you may, you may not, it, it does come down to the individual, but it's a lovely timber for carving, and you'll see afterwards, this is one that I'll demonstrate specifically sanding as well, because it sands beautifully. Well, we... When you mention the wood in, now the interesting, our, our village here, we're in a little hamlet called Colden. And so they reckon that there was um, an inn on the opposite side of the road to us. A little bit of history now. The Civil War, they reckon that Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell and his men, they may have stopped at the inn. That's the, that was the local story. And my uncle, he lives down the road in a place called Step Aside. And the reason it's called Step Aside is that Pembroke Castle kept on changing sides in the Civil War. And Oliver Cromwell, that's why he came down here, was to stop them changing sides. And the local troops met him in that location and they stepped aside and let him through. So hence that place was forever known as Step Aside. So there we go, so a little bit of background, a little bit of local history with the names. So yeah, we're actually in a hamlet called, so we'd be, we'd end up then, if we called it Woodin, it would be Woodin, Coldin would be our, our address. So we called it Inwood, Coldin. 
and now we're known more as the uh, the love spoon workshop so you see we're just building up that twist so once we've done all of the stop cuts i'm then going to do this sort of beveling and that's two parts of the process of doing the twist the final part will be to sand it all over and then of course we will shellac it as well yeah going back to the the walnut and the teak the walnut's a lovely timber to carve we've got a piece there to do another another clock love spoon in um but i it yeah i i would personally tend to agree with dad where i i, I enjoy working more with with the teak but that sounds wrong to me because i i do enjoy uh carving walnut and in the because i know yourselves a few of you um the carver and the wood burning warrior there you're in the US, your your um, walnut is slightly different to our, this one here is our native walnut. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe you have more of the black walnut, but I may be wrong, so please correct me if I am. Can I use Yeah, that's grand. Do you want to show show everybody? Okay. Progress update from Thomas the Woodcarver. He's going to put it on the sander next, so you can see. Excuse me, so he's cut out all of that using our... Uh, scroll saw. So you've got the, the daffodil um, and we've got that ready for the clock movement and then the heart there. So we'll it's, probably demonstrate that. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame the technology hasn't allowed people to have the smell. Smell. Well. Yeah, <laughs> we juniper, haven't got that on the camera. We haven't got that. Uh... The juniper, if you ever had the chance to work with that, the fragrance on it is is beautiful. So you hear a bit of noise again in the background because he's going to fire up the, uh, the belt sander. We've been lucky enough to um, get in contact with a, a company. I do believe they actually make the sanding belts and the price that we're getting them for is um, we can basically get three or four sanding belts for what we would normally be buying one for. So that makes a huge difference then because it speeds everything up because we're, we've got good quality uh, sand, sanding belts that are going to last and um, they're that much cheaper so we can we can replace them a little bit more frequently so we're just using those stop cuts shaping that twist around doing all of that carving in the one direction and then as I said we will turn it around we'll do all the carving in the opposite direction and that's the process. You can see the grain is just starting to turn in the opposite way as we're doing that one there. We shape that on the outside there. But it's been nice for ourselves, as I mentioned, we're going back to revisit all sorts of different products and revisiting, um, making things that we hadn't made for many years which is good fun because you um, you forget some of the items that you've made over the years and some of the different ideas so back over to the other side and what's happening just as we're, we're cutting there there's that that point there is about where the direction of the grain starts running in the opposite direction because we've got that nice vertical grain marked out same again by here trying to work with the grain all the time and i don't know if it comes across but as we mentioned when you're working with teak i don't know how well it comes across in in the video it is it's 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 effortless effortless they use the expression like a knife through butter and that is that's what it's like working with the teak lovely timber it's very rarely mentioned when there's sort of conversations. Now, one little thing I am noticing, as I mentioned, there's a lot of grit that you get in it. Um, and I'm just noticing a little line there. That's just where it's, it's just obviously picked up a little grit on the edge of that gouge now. And so that gouge will have to be resharpened just to take that little nick out you just get a little bit of grit in the teak and it can just just take a little feather edge and i'm just noticing a little line 
So it just means if I look closely enough on the gouge, yeah, there's a little, I can see a little tiny, tiny dot there. So that needs looking at and that needs sorting out. Have we got a, uh, I have to find some? Yeah, it's uh, definitely have a, have a look at, at making something out of teak. Lovely timber. So we're nearly finished in this one direction here. And over the other side as well. And I'm gonna turn it around in the vise, just like so. And we're gonna then start carving back in the opposite direction. Now over Easter, you'll have to let us know what has everybody been working on? I've seen what the, the wood burning warrior has been uh, working on with the Alsatian. So I've seen, seen that one. You'll have to let us know though, everybody else. What have you been working on over Easter? Any interesting projects? Been doing any Easter projects or any requests or anything like that? It's always interesting to know what everybody else is working in. As well, with what we're demonstrating here, the clocks. Is it something yourselves? Have you ever made any clocks? Is it something you're interested in making? Relatively straightforward process. If you're interested in terms of um, the hole in the inside, how you take that out, we'll, we'll show you the, the main method that we use. We, we have a, a cutter. There's the different size cutters and you can use them with a, a hand drill, a pillar drill, and we've got the mortise drill there as well that we do use for it. The pillar drill and the mortise drill are good ways to drill that hole out because uh, you don't have to worry about lining it up because it, it, it's, it's already lined up vertically for you. Um, I've also done it in the past using the scroll saw. That also works in terms of cutting that gap. And um, the other thing we can do afterwards, we've got an oscillating sander and the oscillating sander, that is a, is a good way of, of just finishing it off, getting a nice finish on it. Just a little bit of wood left over. So we're just gonna make that stop cut a little bit deeper and continue carving, working our way now up to the top. So we've shaped everything in the one direction. Same again, there's just a little bit of wood left in that stop cut there. So you can just clean those stop cuts up like so. And one thing hopefully will come across well in the video is the sanding, the hand finishing, when you're working with teak, it's, it's pretty much like no other wood when it comes to the hand finishing. So I'm going to cross the grain a little bit there. Are you done? Is that spoon ready? Yeah. Brilliant, just in time. Now we're we getting to the stage where we're ready for um, the shellac. Okay, well I'll shellac that. And the, you, uh, and the clock, clock and the clock movement. I'm just gonna demonstrate, I was explaining to everyone, sanding the teak, it's, it's not like any other timber really, is it, when you sand it? It's, it's got that really, it's got a really oily dust yeah, to it. You can see damp. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's completely different, but it, I, it's, my, it's probably my favorite, it's probably my favorite timber for finishing and for sanding. Yeah, you know? it's, it's so it's smooth. Got a couple of comments. Oh. Aubrey, uh, I haven't had a chance to do more carving. But I've uh, sent the spoon to the intended. Brilliant. I'm hoping to try and carve a seahorse soon. As soon as I have time. Ah, I figured out the design. Brilliant. We made a seahorse. Um, so it's a nice. Um, that's a nice one to make. Yeah. Really nice one, the seahorse. We made a seahorse. That's on the. That's on the channel. I got a feeling. If you're interested in it, there's the free template as well on our website. You're more than welcome to to use it. Um, yeah, it's a nice project to do. I'm delighted that I'm delighted that she was pleased with the spoon. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. Brilliant. Fair play to you. That's good effort. So we're just shaping the top of that one. Yeah, the seahorse is a lovely carving. We did we did one. Um, we demonstrated one as one of our scroll saw projects before Christmas, and um, we we turned it into like a decorative hook. Let's have a little look. Is that, I think we need to take a little bit of wood just, just out of here. 
And now we're ready for sanding. We figured out as well our, our trials and tribulations with the sandpaper. It was the, it wasn't the, um, we, well, we believe that it wasn't actually our finishing sandpaper. It was the sandpaper that I used before. So we have the different grades of sandpaper and it was our P120. So I got a different P120. There we go. Now hopefully you can see that, how differently it sort of sands. It's a, it's a completely different dust to a lot of the other woods. It's a, as Dan said, it's much more damp sawdust that you get off the teak. Well, it's the oil, it is. It is, it's the oil. It's, oil, it's, it's just so it's full of oil. Yeah. I think it's my favourite timber for sanding. I don't know whether you mentioned much about what you're doing there now. It's, it's a bit of a, um, excuse the pun, but it's uh, sort of going back in time almost. Right. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're doing pots, aren't we? Well, this is what I was talking about. We've talked about everything from Oliver Cromwell on, you know, because I was, I was explaining, somebody saying we could have called it wood in, and I was explaining, well, we're in cold in. Yeah. So, um, it, it is a, it is like a, a a blast from the past. I was talking about some of the things we're going to have a go at making. And then when Oliver Cromwell actually yep. passed within, oh, what are we talking? That's the local story. He would have well, he'd have walked down the road. Yeah. He might have sat in this very spot. And there's a place called Step Aside. Yeah, we explained that one. Oh, you've done that. There so. we go. But it's fascinating that we should be going back now to making clocks because we haven't been able to make clocks for a long time because we've, we've been so busy. That's right. And the, and the other problem, because everybody helped us out with it, we couldn't get a decent clock made. That's right. So that's helped us out then. Yeah. Uh, I built miniature mantle clocks. Oh, brilliant. I brought a four, is it force and a bit? Yeah, I mentioned that. Um, do you want to bring the bit in to show that you use? A bit for boring the right hole. Yeah, brilliant. We were on terms of decals for customers. Fantastic. Yes, I've seen them. Yeah, I have seen what you've been working on. Yeah, very nice too. Um, yeah, we, we use a, a similar one. Oh, is that the one you mean? Is that the one you mean? Well, that's the one. That's one. Yeah, I know that's not the right size, use. but it gives but you an Have idea. you got the cutter that we're using for the clocks? Well, no, I'm using the, I'm using the scroll saw. Oh, have you got a cutter to look? Yeah, okay. This is one way, but as you can see, it's a little bit on the small side for this one. So that's that's same same sort of thing uh, in terms of cutting out. You can use the scroll saw. This is what I used to do when we made a lot of pots. There we are, and then that one there. The hole cutter. There you go. We got the hole cutter like so. So you just cut that down like so. And you used to cut you used to cut it out on the using the mortise drill a lot, didn't you? Yeah, used to I set just, it up on the mortise drill. I, it, it, yes, that's right. I'd yeah. set up a, a, sit, a drill I remember. attachment on there. This is taking me back to my childhood, watching you with the mortise drill. And you do, you would do, say, a batch of, you know, five clocks or ten clocks or twenty clocks. And you'd do all the mortise cuts. Yeah. Well, we, we used to do to make pendulum. The, um, it's getting the decent movement. It's the movement, but also it became clocks. The price of clocks, you know, it's yeah. Marks and Spencer's, you can buy a clock. Yeah. For about fifteen pounds. Well, Walmart would be the one for people in the in the US. Oh, there we are then. Yeah. yeah. Walmart, you go to Walmart. How much does so, it cost? How, does, how much does it cost you to get get a, a clock in in Walmart? It's, so it's it sort of you know ruined the trade as far as. Uh, yeah, it, but it used to be a big part of what we we were doing. One thing we we still can't find is. Um, is a decent barometer movement. Yeah. And it, the company that we've managed to get this, uh, the clock movement sorted out through, they, they said themselves that they used to do barometer movements, but they can't get a decent movement at a decent price. Yeah. They've gone very expensive or not really good. But well, you see what's happened, I mean, a lot of those clocks uh, that were cheap, <laughs> we're cheap. Yeah, and that's the problem, so. And, and if they did work. And we, we always, you always gave people, didn't you, a 12 month guarantee. Yeah. And we used to make pendulum clocks. I think we're there or thereabouts with that one. There we go. Yeah. yeah. And you can see, oh, it's, it's such a, it finishes, it's really yeah. silky. Yeah. For those of you as well, beginners, learning, that sort of thing. I'm always working with the grain. So I'm always, always trying as much as possible to work with the grain so we're not putting scratches into the finish. 
There we are. I will hand it over to Dad. So we're now able though, to um, compete because once you can buy, um, you know, at least we, mark, we can now buy it, the movements. I'll do that one. Actually. Are made in Germany. Yeah. You know. So we, um, it's getting a quality movement yeah. at a decent price. That's and, been you know, the, the, the challenge. Sadness there, really, because um, Wales, believe it or not, we actually used to make clock movements yeah a very big company called smith's and um it was uh astra ginlice it was i think they were making right them. Um, well you're educating me now on i yeah, didn't realize that uh astra ginlice there was a, a clock factory there and so um, I, well to give people an idea you used to make the pendulum clocks yeah. and we would have people contacting us 30 years later saying um any chance we can get a replacement movement yeah that's no, right. There are some things yeah. you don't buy. <laughs> yeah. No, there are some things you don't buy from Walmart. <laughs> so where, where, I, I'm, I'm intrigued now. Where, where would you buy? Where would you buy the, the clocks? The clocks from? I'm, I'm intrigued because this is this is something that we we struggled with. Is that's why we stopped making them? Was because people yeah, we would. Have, we are though. We're able <laughs> now to compete. We can compete again when it comes to clocks because that it. Clock, for instance, you you won't be able to buy that one at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, no, and the interesting thing is that what happened, people were happy with that cheap clock. Yeah. Now there is an interest yeah. Yeah. and a growing interest in being able yeah. again to get the handmade, better quality. Yeah. And, and I think there are still some people uh, making uh, barometers in this country and also making. Yeah, we just. Movements. We haven't found. We haven't oh, found. They're so expensive. I mean, yeah. you're talking about. Um, that's the thing is getting the right over a hundred pounds it's off. getting the right thing in the right price range for us that's the that's the challenge so oh, you can yeah. see with this one we're just carving out the bowl so a different wood Are you happy for me to shellac this thing? oh yeah brilliant if you could shellac that one and then put the clock movement in for everyone to see that'd be great so we're just shaping that bowl as we're going along as dad mentioned before you get that beautiful perfume in it those of you as well interested in the methods that we use, we start off with um, uh, we we start off on the bowl. We use a router and a template to give us our basic shape. Very simple reason why we approach it in that way is that it, it just reduces some of the pushing that we have to do. So when we're when we're doing our carving, there's a lot of pushing involved in it, and it. It just takes out some of the wood, some of the bulk, just reducing down a little bit of that pushing that is required. So the reason then uh, we got this design, we've actually adapted this design from one of our older uh, clock love spoon designs. The message as well, because there's always a message and a story behind what we make. And with this very, seems more relevant than ever with the COVID situation where the message that we put behind our clock, Love Spoons, is that time is a precious gift. So that was the, uh, yeah, the story behind that Love Spoon design. Let's have a little look. We've got a few comments on there. Uh, I suppose you would start by looking at Hobby, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, yeah. On oh, Michael's. I've never looked into the Woodcraft store for it, but it, yeah. Uh, I lived in Germany for six years, so we have two cuckoo clocks. Fantastic, yeah. Begin there and continue online. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's that's where a lot of the right, Germany. Are, you know, we, that's where our movements. We rely on these German movements. They're they're really good. They're, they're quality and. Uh, the German ones and the Swiss Swiss ones. Yeah. But you don't see the, many again, of those, do you? Again, same thing. Beautiful Swiss musical movements. Yeah. Now, of course, cheap foreign ones. Yeah. Um, so sort of ruined the market really. Is this they'd started mass producing them, didn't they? And yeah. um, so you couldn't get because we used to do you used to do the music jewelry boxes, didn't you? Yeah. you? Couldn't get the the same quality of movement. So just just getting a little bit of little bit left over there, just tidying it up. Just going across the grain a little bit. I know we don't carve across the grain much, but when you get the because we carve a bowl from the one side and the other side, you just get where it joins in the middle, just taking away that little bit of wood that's left over. Now, what we've got on this design, 
we're keeping it fairly simple because this design is really focusing uh, mainly on that clock as that centerpiece and it's a beautiful bit of wood. So we're just going to have our flower, our daffodil, our national emblem, excuse me, at the bottom. So we just quickly carve this one out. Interesting with that as well, Dave, for anybody. I mean, you can see the design. Yeah. You've got the heart at the top, which we can obviously put two initials. So it's yeah. ideal for an anniversary. Yeah. Um, it, it could be a wedding gift, you know, that kind of thing. So you could put the initials inside the heart. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but we sort of still got the love spoon on the bottom. That's right. But you could put any kind of symbol where you've got your daffodil. That's right, absolutely. Um, it would be ideal, obviously, for the English rose. Yeah. Um, the Scottish thistle. Thistle. Uh, and the Irish shamrock. Shamrock, yeah. So uh, you know you could. And you so, could if you were doing something, if you're doing something like this in in the US, you have the different flowers associated with the different states, don't you? So, yeah. and the different emblems and. And then in Canada, you've got different, you've got the maple leaf is a popular one. We get asked to do the maple leaf quite often on the love spoons. And of course, what makes it then... The eagle. Uh, makes it unique then, and that's what makes this unique. It's, it's um, yes, you can mass produce that kind of thing, but um, it's... It's, a it's not the same. It's not the same and, thing and, at all. And of course, it would then they would all be exactly the same. And, and that's right. We can vary it. That's and right. That's and the nice we, thing. That's how we compete. Uh, quite often, what will happen where we'll put up a spoon like this one here, and then somebody will email us and say, "Is there any chance you could do me one like that?" And just change the daffodil, for instance, as Dad said, for a rose or. You know, people have asked us for flowers like jasmine and lotus and all sorts of different uh, And the different other requests. interesting thing, of course, if you look back at some of the very old, well, only one, but I can remember seeing a clock movement right? in one of the old love spoons. Really? Yeah. One I'd of never seen it. Ones. Yeah. Really? Uh, it had a square um, well, well, face, well. if I remember rightly, and our own... We did our first one in 1995, was yeah. it? And we did two. We did one for the display in the workshop and one for the house as well. Yeah. Which I will get done so that everybody can see. We have the magnolia. Now I'm thinking, did I do that recently? I did a magnolia, I think. Do you incorporate? Yeah, the cladder. I've done, yes. I did a cladder. I did that. Um, and I tell you what the, the cladder was, because I, I thought that I was doing it for somebody with Irish links, because of course the, the Irish cladder, the, the ring that they use, um, and it worked out that it was somebody who was going to a concert, and it was the symbol used by the band. So they wanted the, um, the cladder carved on the love spoon. So yeah, we have done it once, but that's going back probably about about five years ago now that I did that. Yeah, you can show that one, because that's on the back, you can show the date and everything yeah. on the back. So that's the back of the Love Spoon. That was one Dad did back in 1995. And it's got the little miniature, little miniature clock movement in that one there. So we're very much going back in time. And the different shape bowl to the spoon. Yeah, so we've got the heart shape bowl and a little experiment as well with a chip decoration using little pointed chips as opposed to the more conventional ones. Little experiment with a different style of yeah. decoration. Yeah. Just shows you though how versatile the tradition is and how you can experiment and try different things. Yeah, the um, the the cladder is it's again it's a it's a nice symbol and it's very appropriate for a love spoon, very very suitable. So it is one that we've done a couple of times. I'm trying to think it's got me thinking now of some of the most unusual requests we've had. I can think of one's Japanese writing. We've had requested, haven't yeah. we? We've had, um, it's got me thinking of things like we did a, somebody's boat. Somebody asked for a, a, a barge on there. And we don't take on everything. Cath cathedrals. Because <laughs> sometimes I think we get tested. Yeah, I reckon sometimes it is. It's um, challenge, challenge the wood carver, isn't it? Because yeah. we, we do get asked for quite a wide variety um, of symbols. Not much that we don't carve, but no, it's there are the to say odd. No, but, uh, there are the odd. Sometimes you're better to say no. There are the the odd request where 
it starts to get a little too complex, but not very often. So you can see I'm just getting that framing just around the outside of our daffodil. And this wood, good example really to follow the teak. I just put that on the floor in the sun there Dave, all right? Because it's a little bit uh, chillier today and... Can't get the schlack to, to go off. Okie dokie. The, yeah, the, um, it's a good example for us to carve the juniper after carving the teak because the two things, they do carve very differently. Um, I know I'm doing things there a little bit naughty because I'm carving towards myself, which I shouldn't do. But it does carve very differently because it's a lot, it's, it's a lot less oily. It's, a, it's quite a big contrast then to come from working on the teak where the gouge really glides through the work that you're doing to working on a much drier piece of juniper. So again, we just work in, get in those petals, work into the back edge of our daffodil. And the idea, see with the flowers, symbols like that, you've got the idea, you hope that love will blossom or will continue to blossom. Now we were hoping today to also do a little demonstration um, with my nephews. They are here for the Easter. Let's have a look. So I've just missed out on uh, what wood would you recommend for beginners? Have you tried carving wood, salvage, harvested from underwater? Ah, a couple of interesting questions. Um, there's quite a popular thing locally, isn't it, where they would use driftwood well, for when, when I first arts and crafts. We, we have a beach, uh, interesting beach, actually, some people may have heard of Pendine. And I'll answer the other question as well, sorry to... Pendine, um, they used to um, well, do land speed records, remember? Yeah, the, the world land speed record years ago was set on uh, Pendine Beach. That's right. But in Amroth, just down from there, there was the Sunken Forest, wasn't there? Yeah. And oh. so people used to do a lot of artwork, arts and crafts, using the wood that would wash up on the beach. Yeah, but we used to collect wood from Pendine. So you, you have? Yeah. So there you go, Dad's the one to answer that question. Yes, so definitely. And um, what sort of things would you make? You've made, would that be something? Do you want to bring that in? That's the sort of thing, isn't it? That sculpture. Oh, just a little abstract, yeah. Right, and the other one then, recommended for beginners. Um, what we recommend when it comes to wood for anyone learning, for anyone starting, I, I suppose you've got to try basswood in America. Yeah, if you're in the and, US, basswood, UK, we, it's, it's slightly different, but the, the equivalent in the UK is lime. Yeah. Um, that is your starting point. You wanted that? However, what we say slightly differently, there you go, that's the sort of thing you can see more sort of abstracty type thing. The problem with, I shouldn't have shown the back, that's not been polished up. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with using um, wood that you get from the reclaimed from water, isn't it? Is it that depends how long it's been it's, in the sea. It's how long it's actually been in the water. So for instance, teak, one thing we always wondered at, you get a little bit of grit in it, yeah. and we always wondered, is it because they, they, they cut the logs and then they float them down the river? No, Does I it pick up, it's just the nature of the wood. There we are, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, the, um, you know, wood, when it comes to being in water, that is the one thing, it, it does get more, it does change it. Yeah. So yeah, we have used it, but it's not one that we sort of seek out. I know when I've been on the beach and there's things like an ash tree and you yeah. can feel the weight, the weight of it and the sand and it's, it's, you can tell that it's not gonna be easy to work with. Yeah, back to then in terms of beginners, um, when it comes to wood, and beginners, that's your starting point, is, is what is referred to in the US as basswood, or what we refer to in the UK as lime. But what we suggest that's slightly different to a lot of other people is if you start off with that and it does not suit you, 
try other woods. So, for instance, Dad, he learned to carve with teak, which we've just demonstrated, and teak is a lovely, lovely timber to work in. I learned to carve with beech because I tend to be a little bit more heavy-handed and it suited my style of carving. So what we would recommend for anyone who's a beginner is to try, try the line, because that's a good starting point, but try other woods as well, because we're all different and we suit different things and our style of carving will also suit different things. So myself, I have a bit of an unusual style of carving and it just so happened the best thing for me to learn with was beech. Um, not one of my favorite timbers particularly now, not that I dislike it or anything, it's perfectly nice timber to work in, but I've got timbers that I probably enjoy more and that's what you find as you adapt and evolve as a carver, you, you, change, you change your preference to a degree, unless you like dad and he's always, you've always liked teak. Yes. Any other suggestions? Walnuts, nice, nice timber. Oh, well, no, you're welcome. All of mahogany. You mahogany. Can oh, yeah. If you get them. if you get a good bit of mahogany, that's yeah. we we got a piece in there that we think might be a bit of Honduras mahogany, yeah. and, and that is that'll be beautiful. Yeah. I know. Last week we were speaking with the carver and um, saying about the sourwood. If it, um, yeah, if that comes, we, we'd be fascinated with that one to see how that's, that carves. That's ready now when you want. So to it's all it brilliant. That's only the first coat that's Fantastic. So we got we got the other spoon there ready to to show you how it's come up. So I'm just finishing oh, off on our daffodil. On this one, can I? Uh, that one I haven't carved it yet. Oh, sorry. There we go. So we're just going to finish off just a little bit more shape in there. Have you been in the vice this one? Uh, yes. It's marks. Look on the side. I know my vice. If anybody's wondering about that, you may have seen it on the other spoon. You may have seen it on that spoon there. It's basically, my vice needs a little bit of um, attention. It's time for a... It needs new... Um, it needs a refurb. Face. It needs, what it is, after a, a certain amount of time, these bits that are clamping it, they start to just mark it a little bit. You get a bit of oil, that sort of thing on it, and it's just starting to mark. So that needs sorting. So yeah, we just finish off our daffodil with a few little lines. And as we were saying, it's exciting for us to, to start doing some of these products again that we haven't done for years. One, another one I'd like to introduce again is thermometers. Yeah. That'd be good to, we used to make those. And of course we've pretty consistently made the key rings and the letter openers. So just at the top here, you've got to put this one back in the vice, you need to put a little more, a bit of a block, I'll give you, um, which one's that? This one. Right. Um, so we just do that stop cut at the bottom of our heart, we will shape it around, and this one, this wood, whilst we mentioned that it carves very differently to the teak, it is a fantastic wood for us to work in the juniper because you've got that perfume but also it's that finish again i think that's one thing we always sort of gravitate towards when it comes to wood we like wood that's got character and that's got appeal in it you've always said haven't you did you've always said you can get away with a lot when it comes to wood carving if you've got a nice piece of wood yeah it takes the yeah. pressure off the carver it doesn't it, for some reason it, it doesn't show those um, chisel marks. There. Well, and we'll show it now how it's come up. When you put that shellac up, it comes up such a lovely colour yeah. that it really does, you know, having a nice piece of wood, it can, uh, it can hide the, the sins of the carver, can't it? It yeah. really, uh, it can help us out. I mean, that wood, that juniper, it, I, I find it quite soft. It's soft for carving. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's very different than carving a piece of teak. Yeah. If it's, it's, uh, apologies for this, it's difficult for me to explain. Um, it's difficult for me to explain how, how it's different. Um, and I mean, that particular piece, you've got the heart and the sap. Yeah, it's the, the, main, the main difference I would say between carving the juniper and the, um, the teak 
is the teak is full of oil. So it's, it's, it's almost got a dampness to it when you're carving it. As this one here, and I can see when I've, when I've gone and sourced this wood, because we had this from La Mancha in central Spain, when you go and find it, it very much reflects the environment that it grows in because it's a dry, barren environment that it grows in. And the wood, it is that much more dry. So it's a similar hardness to the teak, but it's different to carve because it's a lot more dry, the wood itself. And if you've got any mark or anything, it, it'll, it'll, it'll mark quite easily. That's right. It, this will show up every little mark as the teak, bit of sand in and it'll cover up all yeah. sorts. Um, so it's, yeah, the two are, are sort of very different in their characteristics. Now, all I would do with this one, Typical, isn't it? There's just a little bit of wood that won't come away there. Oh, I think we've got another comment there. Do you what, want to have a what check? What did we think that wood was at one time? Well, this is the thing because it, it is, I think they class it as well as a as like a Western red cedar and things like this. This is the carver. As yeah. As soon as I have it ready, I'll be shipping it. I started with soft basswood and some ex acto tools. After buying stock in Band-Aid and Peroxide, <laughs> Peroxide, I invested in a set of flex cut knives. Brilliant. I was given some mahogany dowels and carved my family's Christmas presents that year. Fantastic. I now prefer carving hardwoods, cherry being my favourite. That's a difficult timber to carve, I find cherry. But that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because yeah. we're all different. Yeah. Everybody has their different preferences. And cherry, yeah, you can have some really nice pieces of cherry. Now, for instance, I tell you what part of that is. Our native cherry is not as easy to cut. So, for instance, we've had a piece of cherry from Spain. Right. And that I found better for carving. Yeah, it's used a lot in Spain. Yeah. Beautiful, Beautiful wood. Yeah. Fantastic wood. So, depending on well. the variety and yeah. type of cherry, because you get the fruit and the flower in. You, you know, two, there's the two the different cherry trees. Certain, um, like, it's got like a marzipan smell. smell to it. And the yeah. other one smells like cherry sweets. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fas fascinating one. Yeah, cherry, we, we've had some. There's certain types we have here that, that are, as Dan said, can be quite challenging to carve. Yeah. And I tell you what we find, that when we're cutting it on the saws, we have to put a new blade on. Yeah. They do, the saws don't like working with a cherry, but there are other types, for instance, like what we've had from Spain, and they are beautiful for working in. But as we said as well, because we're all different and have different styles and approaches, different woods suit us better than, than others. The subject of wood, I think, you know, as wood carvers, I think, I think it probably you'd find that most wood carvers are fascinated by wood because it's um, it's such a broad subject and it's it's such a lovely material to to work in and it there's so much to learn. Yeah. Yesterday we were doing some filming uh, for another video that we've got upcoming and we were filming in the field behind where we've been planting our trees. You just reminded me actually because I. I've got four trees. Yeah. Uh, there were four little holly saplings that we've moved. Yes. I've got to go down there with a watering can and, uh, and wa water them in. We've got to water them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we would we were down there, and it's it's great to to see. As Dad said, there's some lovely holly trees down there, but there's some nice bits of hazel. If we had a a, a stick maker, we they they'd be yeah. they'd be delighted with them. Yeah. Because it's there's some really nice wood that we've got there, and um, it's just nice to see the trees growing, and and they're just starting, starting to come into, starting to to show the signs that spring is uh, well on its way. I'm just gonna finish this one off by just taking a little bit, just beveling the top of it just a little bit, just like so. And to finish off, we'll bring that other spoon in so everybody can see the finished product. So just shaping that round the top. Same thing again for those of you who are learning, for those of you who are beginners. We're working in the with, with the grain as much as possible. We're cutting away from ourselves as much as possible. I do lapse. You will notice me lapsing, but it's not.
good idea if you can avoid it. Always try as much as you can. With me, it's just rushing or a bit of laziness in terms of turning it round in the vise. Try as much as you can, carve away from yourself. You should always be carving away from yourself, basically. And then just a little bit across the top, just like so. I will put a coat of shellac on that one as well, just to show people how, yeah. how the grain the uh, Just to explain as well, what we Dan's going to put a coat of shellac, but just to explain, what I will do, I'll carve all around the outside here, just to soften that edge. And that's, there we go. That's before it's been shellacked. If you want to bring that other one across, there you go. So that is the love spoon that you saw us demonstrating earlier. With its clock movement, check the time, just about 20 past three. And you can put, a, you know, you can put a coat of shellac. It's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna harm the spoon. There we are, now this is interesting, just saying there. Um, this, this is an interesting one. Saying about, we just had um, Sawyer Rob saying about there, the cherry that he's harvested is, um, and milling into lumber food wood is American black cherry. And he's saying it's one of his favorite, favorite woods as well. And I reckon that that, I, I got a feeling that that'll be the same one as the Spanish one that we've had. Right. And it's easier to carve, it's, and it's nicer to carve than, than what we, what we normally have access to. Because here we have the, you've got the fruit and you've got the flowering, haven't you? Yeah. And the two different cherries, they, they are quite different. There we are, hopefully. I got, I got this one to show, Dave, it's almost uh, shellac. Hopefully that is, uh, yeah, hopefully that's interesting. Um, something different for you all to see. That one there, so, a different idea, a clock love spoon. One that we've, uh, yeah, an idea that we've explored over the years at different times. We hopefully have a, a, a good supplier for the uh, clock movements. So that'll be something that we'll be doing more regularly. Yeah. We've got a, a video coming up as well where that is one of the Still demonstrations. Uh, you yeah, know, you just to see the difference in coming. how that juniper, how it comes up. You can see you get that beautiful contrast beautiful character and beautiful grain. If any of you have the chance, a bit of a run by there. yeah, if any of you have the chance to work with juniper, to do some work in the juniper, highly recommend that one as well as the teak, lovely timber to work in. There we are, thank you again for joining us. Hopefully that's interesting. If you've got any questions, get them into us. Um, yeah, we're always happy to answer any questions, any other thoughts and things as well. Always great to hear from you all, but thanks for joining us and we'll be back again soon. Thank you.